Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. Mine was already wandering. Um, anyway, so welcome to another episode of the show. We've got the uh, we've got a special wine here today, as you can tell, in my all my Spurs regalia here. Uh, my Obi-Wan Ginobili shirt. Probably can't really see that. But uh, because I'm going to be doing a, a wine that I haven't tried before yet, obviously, most of the wines are like that here, and... Um, but it is made by um, Greg Popovich. Well, actually, it's made by A to Z Winery, which he's a partner with. So Greg's not actually out there in the vineyards, you know, doing that and making the wine. But he's a partner with this winery. He started a uh, partnership with him back in 2006. He um, became friends with Bill Hatcher, I believe, in 98. And uh, they talked about having a wine partnership at some point in time. And he decided to do that. And they created a wine called Rock and Hammer. Now, this was kind of a private label wine that Pop would uh, hand out or, or give to friends, you know, people in the industry, not industry, people in the basketball world and all that. So it's not a wine that you can get. It was a 2004 vintage Pinot Noir. I don't know if more of it's been made. Uh, it's kind of hard to get information on it, and you can't get it. You can't buy it. Um, and um, uh, But this became available uh, a few months ago. It, you know, it's your local grocery store here in the at least San Antonio area. I'm not sure if it's uh, outside of the San Antonio market. But it's called Silver Black. I don't know if it's called Silver and Black. It's called Silver Black. It is a 2006 Pinot Noir from Oregon. Um, it is, again, it's actually made by the A to Z Winery. Now, I did try to contact Pop to have him on the show. Um, but uh, he politely declined, well, through the media people of the Spurs organization. He didn't personally decline. But um, uh, apparently he's not a fan of, I guess, talking about wine. He doesn't want to come off as, I guess, elitist, which, yes, the whole irony does not escape me with a wine show called Elite Wine TV um, and that we're, we don't drink elite wine and we're not elitist about wine. But um, anyway, but it's not just me. Apparently he doesn't like to do interviews. And you can't find really interviews from him, especially on video, uh, about wine. But uh, he apparently has a very large collection at his home, and um, he's very into wine. Uh, probably knows a heck of a lot more than I do about wine. <laughs> now, apparently he knows like a lot, from my research, he knows a lot about uh, just even the winemaking process. So if he wanted to go out and make it, I'm sure he could. Um, anyway, so we're going to try that out. And uh, I bought it for $7.99 at HEB. So um, it's definitely a value price wine. Um, I don't like to use the word cheap because a lot of times that cheap ends up having connotations of quality, not price. So, um, um, but it's a, we'll call it a value price, uh, inexpensive wine. So um, I've had these wines open for quite a while, uh, opened them before lunch, and then I just kind of uh, was handling a lot of other things uh, before I got the wine started. Also, uh, hopefully the, the look and feel will look a little bit better. i uh trying to figure out why my videos prior to the past, I don't know, like 20 looked better, you know, use the same camera, and I think it's because of my lighting was a little different. So, anyway, let's get right into the wine. I didn't bring my little book or any of that stuff. Well, you know, we'll just try to wing it without the book. Uh, the problem is the book really helps. So after they do this wine, I'll go upstairs and grab my book, because that way when I come back and do the editing, I already have all my information. All right, so... Um, uh, I think this is a 100% Pinot Noir. I don't know, um, but I'm going to guess it is. Um, it's, it's a little dark for Pinot Noirs, um, so it could be just that the skins uh, 
the skins were in, in contact with the juice a little bit longer than your typical 100% Pinot Noir or what you're, you're used to from Burgundy's um, or European Pinot Noirs. But um, we'll assume it's 100%. Uh, color's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty decent color. Um, something I don't ever talk about, and because it really doesn't have any significance in, in the true wine world, but uh, legs, which you can't see probably, but legs are those little things that, that come down the, the edge of the wine glass. All that really does is kind of gives you an indication of alcohol content. It used to be that legs, lack of, or how many, and all that used to be thought of as a quality indicator, and it, it isn't. Just, just to put that out for you, legs mean nothing as far as the quality of the wine. It can give a bit of indication of alcohol strength. That's about it. All right, so let's get into this. I guess I get a bit of cherry on the nose. Um, I'll make sure you don't like do this to the wine, as Rick Backus says. Uh, anyway, it was something I discovered the past couple weeks since my last video. It's got it, it, it's got it's got hints of cherry. Um, and, and, and I get, I, I know I use barbecue as a, as a descriptor a lot of times, but it's not like there's barbecue smoke in it, but, um, and I know I like really keyed on the word sauce a few videos ago, <laughs> um, but it's not like I get a barbecue sauce with it, but I guess it's that, that type of feeling that I might be in a barbecue restaurant. So the types of smells that you're getting, the spices. The kind of spices that you use with with maybe if you're uh, of doing that. So I get a little bit of spice and a little bit of uh, a little bit of cherry. So let's uh, let's taste it. All right, so let's kind of just kind of by memory go right down the list. Tannins, tannins are pretty light. Um, you get a bit of you get a bit of the um, really it's already been that long. Wow, you get a little bit of um, of the tannins. Get a little bit of that dryness from tannins, but then it smooths out pretty quickly. So it's not an overly tannic wine, and it shouldn't be. It's a Pinot Noir. It should be pretty light. Um, I, I get more of that spice. Um, it, it's a spicy wine. It, it's it's not a Pinot Noir that I'm used to, you know, it, it's, it's got a little bit of a kick to it. It leads me to believe that maybe it's not 100% Pinot Noir, but maybe it is, and it's just that the process, the winemaking process gives it a little bit of extra kick to it. Well, and, and let's, let's talk about this real quick here. It is not specifically Pinot Noir, and I should have I should have come back on that. It is an Oregon red wine, so this is very much like very likely not a 100% Pinot Noir um, at all. And I should have looked at that a little bit more closely. Um, how about I look at A to Z red wine? It's probably very close to that. So let's see what they say is in here, because I guarantee you, if they tell you what's in it, you know, this is exact. it's, I'm not going to say this is, this is the, the A to Z night and day red wine, but it's probably from a similar thing, because what I'm seeing on this is a lot more like what I'm, cherries and plums with deep in graphite, truffle, spices, tobacco, oak, and seeds. I knew it wasn't 100% Pinot Noir. Means I'm getting better at identifying wines. Um, it's very likely um, the two the, this 2006 is very likely very similar to the Oregon Night and Day, um, and I'm just going to say that they don't tell you what's in it, 
But let's, um, oh, wait a minute, tasting sheet. Let's see if it has it on there. I should have maybe researched a little bit more. Here we go. Told you. I had a feeling it was more, there was more Merlot and, and maybe a little cab. And sure enough, it's this, not this, but this other 2007 um, red wine is Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Syrah, Sangiovese, Grenache, and Cabernet Franc. It's not a Pinot Noir. I knew it wasn't. It was too dark and it had a wrong flavor profile. It was not a Pinot Noir. So it's probably very similar. It's probably maybe not exactly all those varietals. And I'm not going to give you the percentages on this one because it won't be the same. I'm pretty sure it won't be the same. But let's just say it's, um, well, it's not, a, it's not uh, wouldn't be considered a meritage because it's got Sangiovese and Grenache. But um, it's definitely a red blend of wine. Uh, probably still a Cabernet Sauvignon based or at least heavily Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot based wine. It's good. Let's put it that way. It's good. Because um, I was going to be really surprised. I'm like, man, Pinot Noir tastes like this? I'm not, I've never had one that tasted like it. You know, the, um, to, to go back to what my note taking would be, on the aroma, it's, it's, it's not really intense. Um, it's, a, it's a decent aroma. It doesn't overpower you. Um, like I said, the flavor profile is pretty flavorful. Um, it's got, like I said, it's got that little bit of cherry and a little bit of spice. Now, did I taste exactly all that in there? No, but I can see the tobacco where the smoke aspect, maybe, that, that barbecue type of thing where you're, you're outside. So maybe that's where I'm getting the tobacco part. Um, maybe even a little bit of leather. Yeah, definitely, I, I can see the tobacco now, now that I'm thinking about it. Graphite truffle, no. The cassis, um, that's probably in there. It's kind of like melded in with the cherries. But um, now they say a strong ripe tannic structure. I'm going to say they're, 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 they're kind of light to maybe medium tannins. Acid, it's, it's about light acidity. Um, it's a good balance, a good structure. Um, it's a darn good wine. Uh, is it a 90 plus point one? I don't know if I'd call it 90 plus points. I'm not saying that's what this was uh, rated. Um, but uh, I, I would I would probably, I'd probably at least give it, I don't know, an 80. I'd probably give it an 89. I mean, besides the fact of the whole fandomness, let's just think about the wine itself. Is it tasty? Yeah. It's really good. Um, I think I think for eight dollars, I'm 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 really disappointed I didn't try this earlier because I I bought this wine I don't know back in April, yeah in April kind of right after I got off probation and all that so, and it's now July so I feel a little bad I haven't had I mean this is a wine I'd like to get more bottles of just to have around the house it's I mean yes there's a little bit of fandom involved probably because I'd like to have more of it but one little thing I do want to talk about. And then I'll wrap all this up real quick. Um, the uh, the proceeds from this from the sale of each bottle support the community initiatives of the Silver and Black Give Back, uh, which used to be called the Spurs Foundation. So part of this also goes to charity. So that's another cool thing about it. If you're in the San Antonio area uh, and you want to find a, a good red wine um, that's easy drinking. It's got some good flavor. It's got a good flavor profile. It's it's very inexpensive, eight dollars for a bottle of wine, and you're you're kind of having a little bit. Of, there's a little bit of charity involved for for the for the community. Get it. Highly recommend it. Uh, wish Pop could have been with me to uh, kind of talk about this, um, but you know what? That's cool. And uh, let's hope that the lockout does not extend itself too much. But you know what? If it's going to be like 1999, bring it on because we won a championship. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up right that with that, and I'll see everybody again next time.